Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Frank O'Connell. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here this evening. How are you? I'm great, and thank you for inviting me. Oh, my gosh, you betcha. Uh, today, we're going to talk about your new book, Jump First, Think Fast, an unconventional approach to high performance. And as we chatted about just a few moments before we press the go button, in this high-paced world, we have to often move quickly if we don't want to lose opportunities. Most of our listening audience, uh, audience is uh, business owners of all sorts. Um, and we're going to talk about, are you taking the adequate risk to grow and flourish in your business? And you have wonderful stories shared in your book. But before we go to all of that, you've been an entrepreneur for many, many years. And uh, business owner, what even prompted you to write your book? Well, you know, a lot of my interchange, particularly with young people in kind of both, you know, coaching and being a, a mentor, um, it, and telling my stories, they kept saying, why don't you write a book? Why don't you mm -hmm. write a book? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I kept telling these stories and I finally decided about five years ago, I am going to write a book. And I wrote a 250 page outline and then mm -hmm. it took me four years eventually to, you know, get it into a book. Mm -hmm. And again, my, but my mission really is to encourage people to take risks, you know, to grow personally, professionally, you know, mm -hmm. and their businesses. You just can't grow without taking risks. Yeah. I mean, often I think people, once it gets comfortable, I know um, a friend of mine had a business that grew to mid six figures and things were going well, but he wasn't, you know, when you get comfortable, it's like, well, I'm bringing in six figures. Things are going well. I have two employees. What do I need to really bust my chops for? But things had a downturn as of recently. And uh, he said, I wish I'd been on top of it because things don't always stay the same. As we talked about just before we hit the interview, you know, things are fast paced, you know, new um, businesses can come about that can be competitors that can challenge your customers and pull them on over. And you might not have the customer base you have today, tomorrow, if you don't continually strategize and take the risk necessary. Yeah. I mean, the key now is I, I say mindset over skill set is mm -hmm. learn fast, mm -hmm. agility, and you've got to overcome the fear of failures. So I've had lots of them. You got to really move on and shift because you're going to have, if you're pressing hard enough, you're probably going to have failures. So you, you can't worry about that. You got to just, you got to move on. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, now tell me your perspective on this, Frank, because I've noticed one thing that's really missing from a lot of businesses and that could help businesses stay on top and flourish is, is quality customer care for their vendors and customers and even employees because often i find that missing in a lot of businesses yeah i i definitely agree you know mm -hmm. those are the two audiences that i always have hyper focused on we stay very close to the customer and we it's a different world we partner with that customer now strategically what are their problems that we you know really need to solve and then the other, of course, is your employees and your workforce. And what I have always done is why we have all this measurement of objectives and performance reviews mm -hmm. for every individual. We have a development plan because you really have got to be interested in the personal development of the people that work for you. And actually, that's got to come first. So mm -hmm. I say when people walk into my office, I said, first, I want to think about you. Then we'll talk about the company. Mm -hmm. I love that, Frank, because, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you think, okay, I'm just hiring this person, but this person is becoming an integral part of the business. It's a part of them. They are there sometimes longer than with their family or children uh, with the business and coming into work and being with you all. So it, it behooves the business to think about the personal development. And as people continue to grow, they can actually serve the business better. Yeah. Well, you know, most definitely. You know, you brought up another thing. We also, I like to go beyond, you know, just that individual that's there every day working and thinking about what's the impact when they go home? Because a lot of the stress goes home. Mm 
And so it, there are times at which we do all sorts of things to let the person at home and the family know we care about them. It may be just sending them boxes of our own product or buying them a family, you know, meal at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But you, I, you've got to consider what's going on at home is critical. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I find you had mentioned just prior, uh, really honing in on the needs uh, of your customer. And sometimes it's not even about your product or service or, you know, information that you're providing. It can be as small as, you know, is it easy for them to contact you and get information if there's a problem with the services you provide or product? Uh, I remember early on when we started doing our advertising, we had someone call very frustrated saying, your phone number was not the first thing on your website. We couldn't locate you. We had to go to a number of different places. Could you put it in an easy to find place and, and also email? And so, you know, finding the, you know, something as simple as that can make uh, your customer's experience that much better. Yes. And, you know, the other thing I'll say from, because I've moved from business to business to business with mm -hmm. very different customers, the first thing I do when I go in and take over a business is I go right to the customers. I line up all sorts of customer visits because it's the one time that you can go and say, tell me how we can improve and directly hear that from the customer. So even a very, even if you're a high level executive, you need to have a constant dialogue with uh, that customer. Yeah. Yeah. And actually some of my best uh, managers, supervisors, CEOs of companies that I've worked with have been the ones that I will have the open door that I don't just say we have an open door. I actually mean you can come in and we're going to hear what you have to say and, and deal with it and feel that you're heard. Now, you also mentioned mentorship uh, in all the places you've worked. Have you mentored a lot of the people you've worked with? Yes. You know, um, and again, it's their personal development. Now, there's some interesting ways, of course, you know, to do that. Most companies have, of course, annual reviews. Mm -hmm. So they've got key measurement criteria. And that feedback is critical because, you know, the people that are working for you want to know how am I doing? How can I, you know, how can I improve? And then I use, we use that for mentoring, here are the areas you can, you know, Im you can improve in, you know, we're here to add support you. And in many cases, um, I assign an, in an executive in the company to really be, you know, a support person for every individual in the company so that they've got somebody at a higher level they can, you know, they can really talk to. But I also do a lot on the outside, especially with entrepreneurs and startups. Mm. I, I love that. It is so imperative. Well, also being an entrepreneur and a startup, having that mentorship and of people be, who have been there out there and experienced it to walk you through the challenges. But I love what you're talking about also from an employee standpoint that um, anyone who works with you knows that you have their listening ear. And I'm hoping anyone listening in today who is a business owner uh, realize how can we implement things like that mentorship, um, not just have that once a year review, but more often, maybe quarterly, just to check in with your people to see where they're at and how you can help them improve and be their fullest potential. Yes. You know, and there are other, there are other good techniques. Now, if you're running a larger company, one of the problems is, and you're sitting on top of it, is, you know, you have an HR department, you know, who's an ear, should be a good ear for you mm -hmm. um, and be a, a safe place for employees to come in. Um, but also things like, you know, we do anonymous annual surveys, mm -hmm. you know, right down to the production floor so that I give people a chance so I can take a look at what's going on or is there a problem in a department, mm -hmm. you know, someplace, something that we really need to do or individuals who are having a problem that we can go help and support. Yeah, share with me, um, how have you helped, like let's say there is a department that's having a gripe with another department and you've seen maybe this anonymous um, put through of issues, how do you go about bringing the two together so they could work through the issues? Well, I, I have had a technique that I have used forever and I think very successfully. Mm -hmm. I bring the two groups together. Um, I have whiteboards in the room 
And that, and sometimes I work with a, a facilitator. Sometimes I do it myself. And I say, okay, let's go around the room. Let's write down the issues on the board. And of course, what you're doing is first looking, making sure you're getting the issues down in the way that they say them. But at the same time, you're kind of depersonalizing things so that you start to work together. And then we say, okay, let's summarize what really are the issues? You know, what really are the issues here? And then let's work together. Let's try to put a plan together to solve the problem. Let's mm -hmm. execute the plan. And then let's come back in three weeks and talk about whether it worked. So physically actually putting together and diffusing, but really going after the problem. You'll also enjoy this one is often I, find, I start with, is there really a problem? because sometimes it is just simply the pressure of work and it's the normal conflict between sales and production and mm -hmm. whatever. And we look at it and I say, is this really a problem or is this just the nature of our business? Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So that seems funny, but make sure there's a problem before you go to try to solve it. <laughs> no, I, I like that you're saying that. One, depersonalizing it, because I've seen different departments go at each other and by having them all come in the room, write down issues, not, oh, I have a problem with Sarah or Jeff or whatever. Um, let's just talk issues. What are the issues? We put them on the board. Everyone looks at them. What are the solutions? So that way it's all solutions based and not pointing finger based. And then on top of it, as you said, sometimes it's just over, you know, different certain times of the year. Maybe you, you're, um, you do products and Christmas is your busiest time of the year and you're just, everyone's more stressed trying to get yes. out all the products so it's really not an issue of or logistics perhaps because of this time of year being so stressful and not so much it's a problem but how do we logistically work through this difficult or strenuous part of the year yes yeah. definitely yeah and, you know and i'm also but i'm also very direct and highly sensitized to the culture mm -hmm. and if they really you have people working for you that are not you know, that are not taking place in the in the culture or in fact to just have an issue that is affecting anybody else. I mean, I will make the tough decision to take them out, you know, as opposed to having all the rest of my people have a negative, be in a negative environment. So sometimes it's tough and you have to do that. Yeah. And by that, you mean if there's someone that's making a negative response for the rest of the team, you decide, okay, we're going to have to let them go and pull them aside and, and, you know, let them know that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I call it co coaching them out of the company. So, yeah. <laughs> so how does that look? What's that look like actually? So you bring them in and you well, say, uh, well, yeah, what's, what's that look like? Yeah. I, um, and, and this also is common when it, you know, comes to, you know, the review. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first, I'd let give them a chance to talk and say, do you think you've got an issue here? And let them see if they are self-aware. Sometimes they're not self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> Other times they are. And see if they are self-aware. If not, then, you know, I try to point out, but with very factual information so it's not elusive mm. to give them a chance to look at it. And then, you know, with compassion, we talk about, let's talk about what your strengths and your weaknesses are. And mm -hmm. if collaboration is not one of your, you know, your strengths, then we say, mm -hmm. let's talk. Is there a better place for you? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes we, we give them help in helping them try to find the, the, you know, the place that they should be, but in a different situation and out of the company. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I like that because I've been in companies and worked as a consultant where there were certain individuals that worked hard, but where they were at or serving within the company was not their forte. They were in the wrong space. And, and I think one of my gifts is looking at someone, seeing where their potential and gifts are and saying, okay, you're best served over here. And then, yeah. you know, sometimes they'll feel like, well, that, that yeah. maybe is a lateral move or that's a step yeah. down. Uh, but this is not about a step down or whatever. It's about letting you grow to your fullest potential and maybe this area over here you can grow in a spot that will make you feel yeah. more fulfilled and less frustrated correct and yeah. you know there are also now techniques 
that are pretty good, what I call, you know, assessment techniques. And I'll give you uh, one of them. We had, I've got a toy, very vibrant, fast moving toy company. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were having problems getting the right mix of creative people, etc. So what we did was we went to an outside group to do independent assessment. It's a great tool, uh, which is called the predictive index with Dartmouth developed. Um, and basically, it helps the individual see what they're good at, what they're not good, which situations they should be in and not be in. So we will sometimes put that through that and then share that with them and say, to your point, wow, mm -hmm. you're in the wrong place, but you could be very successful in either this environment or in sometimes we move them around the company. Yeah. Yeah. And let's go back really quickly. I'd like to touch on what you talked about when sometimes there's not a problem, but it's more logistical or stresses of the everyday environment. Um, has there been a time where you worked in a company where you had to change policies, procedures, things changed and people were like, oh, no, whatever, and they didn't get on board with it. How did you work through that? OK. Um... Yes, and it's, let, let me tell you, it's frequent. I've done three major turnarounds, mm -hmm. and that's very common in a turnaround because in some cases I had to lay off hundreds of people. We had to make a total strategic shift, and I always said, it, here's the way it normally works. There's a third of the people who will automatically get behind you and the new strategy blindly and say, I'll make it succeed. Mm -hmm. Then there's probably a third or less that, are resistant, okay? Don't believe in the new strategy. They may be vocal about it or not. And that group basically, you know, I go in and face that with each one of them and say, you, you know, this is, I want everybody to be on board here. If you don't believe in the strategy, I understand that, but then you should be someplace else. Then you have the third in the middle. And a lot of them, I call, are, probably sitting on the fence and waiting to see if the new strategy is going to work or not. And that's yes. the group that you work the most with, you know, in, you know, making sure that the strategy works and listens to them, you know, um, et cetera. But it's, uh, you, you know, that's kind of the way, that's the kind of the way it breaks up. But also I use heavy communication constantly. I put, pull the whole organization together and I say, Look, here's the new strategic plan. Let's talk about it. I get them as involved in development of the plan. So it's their plan, mm -hmm. not my plan. And that goes a long way. Yeah, that, that's probably the biggest key I'm taking from you. When you include the people that work with you in the plan, then it's not, I think more of them will get involved or, or go along with it because they'll feel like you're not just here, get used to everything changing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and they feel like they're a part of it. Uh, this has been awesome because I know s everyone listening in can learn so much more from your book, Jump First, Think Fast. How can they get a copy and find out more about you? Well, the best is to go right to the website, jumpfirstthinkfast.com. It's all, it's all there. And then, you know, because I do a lot on LinkedIn, so you can find a lot about it on LinkedIn. But it's best to go to the website and it's... Mm -hmm. You know, you can buy the book and also in audio form as well. Ooh, ooh, that's great. A lot of our business owners say that they're always on the run. They can't read. Well, you have no excuse. You can go get an audio copy today. Jump first, think fast .com. I just have to thank you again, Frank, for coming to share your great wisdom today on Savvy Broadcasting. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You betcha. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.